Hello students, welcome to today's video lesson where we shall discuss a very interesting article titled Discovering Tut, The Saga Continues by A. R. Williams. Tutankhamun or King Tut as he is fondly known as was the 11th Egyptian pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. A pharaoh is a name used for an ancient Egyptian king such as King Ramesses II or Ozymandias, about whom you had a poem in your syllabus in a previous class. Tut was crowned king in the year 1333 BCE at the young age of 9 years. However, he died in the 1323 BCE of causes which still remain a mystery. According to Egyptian funerary practices, his body was mummified and put into a pyramid, the ancient Egyptian tomb, along with his personal items of use and riches. A mummy is a deceased human or an animal whose skin and organs have been preserved by the use of chemicals, extreme cold, very low humidity or lack of air. Egyptian pyramids are ancient masonry structures in the shape of polyhedrons. Most of these were built as tombs for the pharaohs of the Egyptian kingdoms. His tomb was found in the year 1922 on 4th of November by the British archaeologist Howard Carter. Several years later, the mummy was once again investigated using sophisticated modern forensics and high-tech imaging which have not been able to pinpoint the cause of his untimely death but given the experts certain clues to move ahead with their investigation. Before we begin with the article, let us familiarize ourselves with the writer. Anne R. Williams is an award-winning writer, reporter and editor. She specializes in science, archaeology and cultural heritage. She has academic degrees on classical and Near Eastern archaeology, West Asian archaeology and Egyptology. Let us now begin with the article. The article begins with the writer providing details about the weather conditions on the day the world-famous mummy of King Tut or Tutankhamun was put under a CT scanner on the 5th of January 2005 at 6 p.m. in the Egyptian cemetery or the Valley of the Kings. The sky was filled with dark clouds and covered the stars with a brooding grey colour. A strong wind accompanied alongside. It seemed as if nature opposed the man-made attempts of disturbing the sanctity of the dead. The author has beautifully woven in an air of mystery and magic. Since the Egyptian pharaoh's dead bodies were known to carry a curse to whoever disturbed or defiled the mummies. In the afternoon, tourists from all over the world descend down 26 meters below the ground in the cramped rock-cut tomb to pay their respects to King Tut. Some gazed at the murals or paintings done on the wall of the burial chamber and peered at King Tut's gilded face. Others read from guidebooks in silent whispers and some stood wondering about the cause of this young pharaoh's death. Everyone seemed to be in awe of the boy king's majesty and the immense mystery surrounding his unexplained death. Zahira Vaz, the Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, took a long look at Tut's mummy and remarked that it was in a bad condition because of British archaeologist Howard Carter's crude investigative methods in the year 1922. Howard Carter discovered the sand-covered tomb of King Tutankhamun after almost 3300 years of his burial. The discovery led to the procurement of stunning artifacts in gold. It still remains the richest royal collection found at a pharaoh's tomb. In Tut's time, the royals were extremely wealthy. It was also their common belief that they could take their riches with them in their afterlife. Thus, King Tut was lavishly adorned with precious collars, inlaid necklaces and bracelets, rings, amulets, a ceremonial apron, sandals, sheaths for his fingers and toes, all of it made of gold. Even his inner coffin and mask were made of pure gold. This is called a sarcophagus, a receptacle for the dead body often adorned or sculpted beautifully. 
He was also buried with things of regular use like a bronze razor, linen undergarments, board games and cases of food and wine. Do you think it is possible to carry over material things to the afterlife? All of us know that it is not. However, these are beliefs and practices of a civilization that was based on religion and rituals and customs. It is also a proof of man's greed for wealth and comfort even after he dies. Coming back to the article, after several months of carefully recording King Tut's funerary treasures, Carter began investigating his three nested coffins. In the first, he discovered signs of a March or April burial as he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves, cornflowers, lotus petals and wild celery. However, Carter had trouble trying to extract the actual mummy from the solid gold coffin. The ritual raisins, which were used for the process of mummification, had hardened over time. It had cemented Tut to the bottom of his solid gold coffin. Carter tried to liquefy the cementation by placing the mummy in the blazing desert sun for several hours and heating it to 149 Fahrenheit, but with no positive results. In desperation, he followed his only option. He chiseled away from beneath the limbs and the trunk of the mummy to make it possible to raise it from the coffin. In the crude process of removing all of Tut's adornments, Carter's men removed the mummy's head and destroyed nearly all the major joints of the corpse. After this, they reassembled the remains on a layer of sand in a wooden box with padding that concealed the damage. Thus, it became the bed where King Tut rested till he was once again taken out in the year 2005. Archaeology has developed over the years. Over the decades, archaeology has focused less on finding treasure and more on the fascinating details of life and the mysteries of death. Moreover, sophisticated tools, including medical technology, is being used in archaeology. In 1968, after more than 40 years of Carter's discovery, an anatomy professor x-rayed the mummy and revealed that beneath the racin that was used as an embalmment, his breastbone and the front ribs were missing. However, even diagnostic imaging done by computer tomography or CT, which involves hundreds of X-rays in cross-section put together like slices of bread in a three-dimensional virtual body, could not reveal much of Tut. Historically, the demise of King Tut was a big event as he was the last king of his family's line. However, the reason of his death was unclear. Tut's grandfather, Amenhotep III, was a powerful pharaoh who ruled for almost four decades. He was followed by Tut's father, Amenhotep IV, who initiated one of the strangest periods in the history of ancient Egypt. Amenhotep promoted the worship of Aten, the sun disk, and changed his name to Akhenaten. He moved the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akhetaten, known as Amarna. He attacked and destroyed the images and temples which worshipped Amun, a major Egyptian god. Thus, Amenhotep came to be known as the heretic king. In the words of Ray Johnson, the director of the University of Chicago's research center in Luxor, the site of ancient Thebes, the family that had ruled for centuries was coming to an end. And then Akhenaten went a little wacky. After Akhenaten's death, Smenhar ruled for a brief amount of time. Next followed Tutankhaten, a young pharaoh of nine years. He restored the earlier practice of worshipping Amun and changed his name to Tutankhamun or the living image of Amun. He died unexpectedly in a mysterious way after ruling for nine years. In the next phase, the mummies are scanned using a portable CT scan machine donated by the National Geographic Society and Siemens, the manufacturer. King Tut is one of the first mummies to be scanned. Hence, even in death, he remains ahead of his countrymen just as he was when alive. Tut was just one mummy out of many in Egypt. The Egyptian Mummy Project 
which began an inventory in the year 2003, has recorded more than 600 mummies so far. A CT machine scanned the mummy head to toe, creating 1700 digital X-ray images. Tut's head was scanned at 0.62 mm slices to register its intricate structures. A team of specialists in the fields of radiology, forensics and anatomy probed for answers related to Tut's untimely death. The entire process of bringing Tut out of his resting place by the workmen to completing the scan and putting him back took less than three hours. The night of the scan, workmen carried Tut out in a box from his tomb. They climbed a ramp and a flight of stairs like pallbearers into the swirling sand outside. Then they rose on a hydraulic lift into the trailer that held the CT scanner. However, the scanner stopped working due to sand in a cooler fan. Eventually, substitute fans were put to use to finish the procedure. A guard joked that it was the pharaoh's curse. The nervousness and tension in the air indeed made the activity entirely eerie and full of doubts and fears. After the scan was done, Tut was put back into his tomb. Several images of Tut showed up on screen. A grey head took shape neck vertebrae appeared and several ribs and a hand were revealed. A transection of the skull also showed up. Zahi Hawass, the Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, seemed relieved that everything was seamlessly completed. At the end of the day, just above the entrance to Tut's tomb stood Orion, the constellation which the ancient Egyptians knew as the soul of Osiris the god of the afterlife. The author seems to blend in the supernatural with science seamlessly so that the magical charm of legends is not completely lost in the technicalities of modernity. With that, we come to the end of this article on Tutankhamen, the boy pharaoh whose death remains a mystery even after thousands of years. See you next in the recap video where we shall discuss a few important points from this chapter.